Sean, was that comment about how all you could really need now is a fresh beer? Was that code for please get me a beer? Yeah. Yeah, it took you a while to catch on to that one. It's in the cooler, and then there's lime. You could put a lime in it. Let me guess. You could really go for a fresh beer with a lime. In the koozie. Yeah, delivered. Where, oh where, has summer gone? Gray, it's chilly, I'm in my winter hat. <laughs> oh, I feel like it was just yesterday. It was 90 and sunny. Sun, where are you? Oh, I think I'm gonna just dream about that day. It's like a dream. Brunch is served. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Does it look good? Uh-huh. Um, the egg kind of came out a little mm -hmm. bit. And how's the first bite? It's good. Tasty? Mm -hmm. How's it compared mm -hmm. to yesterday's? Real good. It's not as pretty, but. That's okay. Any suggestions for improvement? Less cheese. Oh, it's too cheesy? It's pretty cheesy. I mean, it's good, but my heart's probably gonna stop. Closing up shop. Closing the blinds. It's the first time he's ever closed the blinds. Which these blinds are the best. 93 degrees. It's gonna be 93 today. The sun's gonna be beating in here. Like, it's gonna be warm when we get back. Yeah. So, and uh, little guy is ready to go. Big guy's ready to go. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, I'm gonna take my mask. You know, you never know when you're getting the mask these days. Wow, you're really, <laughs> he's really closing up. Now we're just waiting on daddy. We're not normally waiting on you. This is the first twice in like a two hour period. I'm waiting on you. So we always do a lot of traveling outside of Seattle and on our boat and at Anchor and doing all sorts of things. And we don't actually show you guys a lot of Seattle itself, like downtown Seattle or South Lake Union. We're always on ocean water, in the salt water. So today we're gonna to take you to freshwater and give you another little flavor of what Seattle's all about. Shoal Shoal Marina in Seattle's Ballard neighborhood is a great home for a lot of reasons, some being the eye candy, as well as its close proximity to the Ballard Locks and our old friend Wally.
So up ahead, there's two locks. There's a big lock and a small lock. And it looks like they are potentially filling in the bigger lock for like big yachts that come into the lake and some bigger boats. But this is mid-August and it is prime time for people to go into the lakes from the sound or vice versa. And the only way that's enjoyable to go through here in like less than two and a half hours is with the dinghy. So we're gonna hopefully just slip in and slip out. Going through the locks, or locking through as it's called, can be stressful with a big boat, especially on busy summer weekends when wait times can be hours long. And in our opinion, the most enjoyable way to experience the locks is on our dinghy. Reloading the small lock, see if we can squeeze in this thing. Smaller inflatables like a dinghy or non-motorized vessels like kayaks typically wait near the entrance for a green light to slip into any open spaces between boats that are already secured in the lock. After the attendant called for us to move into the lock, we pulled in between two boats at the front where we tied up and waited as the rising water lifted all boats. The Ballard locks carry more boat traffic than any other lock in the United States, and they're a 24-7 gateway into Lake Union and Lake Washington from Puget Sound. That boat we just passed is our very first boat, our 24-foot Glastron, and it's so awesome to see it out here. So whoever owns that Glastron, I hope you're enjoying it. We loved ours, and it's such a perfect boat out here. You can get everywhere with it. You can get to San Juan's, South Sound, even go up Vancouver Island. Oh, memory lane. Before reaching Lake Union, we first have to take a scenic cruise through Salmon Bay, which cuts between the Ballard and Fremont neighborhoods to the north and the Queen Anne and Magnolia neighborhoods to the south. This waterway showcases an array of super yachts, fishing vessels, floating homes, and everything in between. One of the unique experiences for boaters is getting to cruise by the vibrant floating home community that really sets Seattle apart. The most famous, of course, being the Sleepless in Seattle House. Can't get any better than this. Beautiful views. Space Needle, downtown Seattle, and it's definitely 93 degrees. How does it feel? Ah, refreshing. Good. Yeah, you're so warm. You're so warm. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> oh. Oh, good boy, bud. Good boy. Good boy. So regarding seaplanes, it's a little crazy that all of us boats out here, kayakers, paddle boarders, anybody can just float. You can't anchor, but you can just float around and, and drift around and you know try to be responsible and not hit anybody. But the seaplanes have to make way for us boaters. They have to find their own runway, which I can't imagine a harder job in the summer when this lake is littered with boats and they just have to fly around and find a place. 
Boats don't really go out of their way to move for the seaplanes. I give them credit. If you're a seaplane pilot out there, like, kudos to you. Sean, was that comment about how all you could really need now is a fresh beer? Was that code for please get me a beer? Yeah, that yeah, took you a while to catch on to that one. It's in the cooler and then there's lime. You could put a lime in it. Let me guess, you could really go for a fresh beer with a lime. In the koozie. Yeah, delivered. Go. <laughs> go, you captain. There you go. Thank you, sweetie. I've been serving him like all day today. Breakfast, egg sandwich, beer. Hey! <laughs> what are you doing with the camera? Who gave you that? <laughs> oh, it smells so good. How's it going up there, Sully? Still. You man in the dinghy? Okay, buddy. <laughs> okay, come here. Good job. Good job, buddy. <laughs> A boating day in Seattle is already top-notch, regardless of the weather. But when you add in sun, a heat wave, swimming in warm water, and a backdrop of downtown Seattle and the Space Needle right there, it's pretty much unbeatable. In the Seattle area, we never get to swim. Like once a year, maybe twice a year. Oh. So all of you guys out there in Florida, the Bahamas, somewhere warm and sunny, don't ever take it for granted. No matter what kind of boat you have, kayak, sail, power, a yacht, a donut boat, or a personal favorite, the hot tub boat, you'll surely be able to enjoy a day on Lake Union. Well, that was a fun day in Lake Union headed back through the locks. Hopefully uh, we get in pretty quickly. It's almost four o'clock. Been out here for about five hours. Time flies when you're having fun on a Sunday. Days like this are extremely rare in Seattle, so we're glad we took full advantage of the sun and warm temps while they lasted. We even got lucky arriving at the locks just as they were filling up so we could slip in without having to wait. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our life living aboard a trawler and cruising the Pacific Northwest and beyond, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on next week's adventure north where we solve a pretty interesting mystery. And how about a thumbs up for this little guy for being such a good boat dog and for always making sure we get home safely. See you next time. Let's go ahead and get started with our weekly Q&A. This week we got five questions teed up for you. Our first question comes from Oliver. Oliver lives in New York and asks, just curious why you chose a powerboat over a sailboat. I'm looking to purchase a uh, live aboard and still deciding between the two. Um, good question, several reasons. Number one, we don't know how to sail. Um, sailing seems like a lot of work to us. Uh, we like the idea of just being able to turn the key, put the boat in gear, and, and point it in any direction that we want. That's, that's a big one to us, not being dependent on the weather, being able to travel point to point in any direction, not dependent of wind, 
Um, the other thing is layouts. We really like how a trawler has a lot of its living space above the water line and there are spacious windows where you can look outside as opposed to a sailboat where a lot of the living spaces tend to be um, sort of more cavernous or, or you know down below. So I think it's uh, just not knowing how to sail, not really wanting to be heeled over all the time that we're underway. I guess a catamaran solves that problem and then uh, the layout of a trawler. And really at the end of the day, I, I think when you talk to serious cruisers, the cost isn't all that different. Trawlers, yes, tend to use a bit more fuel, but sailing isn't uh, free by any means. Sails and rigging need to be maintained and, and replaced. And sailboats uh, are often motoring probably, uh, you know, 50% of the time. So you need to keep that uh, in mind when you're deciding between the two. Our next question this week comes from Ray Taylor. Ray Taylor lives in the UK and asks, do you miss having a home on land? How do you get on with a car, shopping, food, etc.? So no, we don't miss living on land uh, at all. We really enjoy living aboard. Um, regarding the second part of your question, how do we get on with a car for uh, running errands and shopping, we do have a vehicle at our home marina. So anytime we're moored at our home marina, we can take our vehicle and run out and uh, go grocery shopping and things like that. When we're out traveling and we're visiting other marinas, we do have our scooters on board, which helps make us a little bit more mobile. And when those don't have quite the range to get where we want, we can either rent a car or we can Uber places. So good question. Our third question this week comes from Gregor. Gregor lives in Scotland and asks, uh, having been living full time on Freedom Now for a while, would you consider making longer passages in her? And do you ever see yourself going bigger to make longer passages uh, possible? So I'm gonna answer the second part of that question first. The nice thing about owning a Nordhaven is uh, our boat has all the range we could ever need. Um, so we really don't need to go bigger to make a longer passage possible. Obviously a bigger boat may make things a bit more comfortable, but this boat does have the range to uh, cross oceans. And uh, the first part of your question, yes, we absolutely plan to, to travel further and travel more uh, offshore. That'll be coming up here next year in 2021, so stay tuned to see where our travels take us. Our fourth question this week comes from Jim. Jim lives in Michigan, and Jim asked two questions. His first one is, if you could pull money out of your pocket, what would, what would you replace in your helm? Um, so I'll answer that question first. So uh, our helm electronics aren't all that old. They're about 2014 vintage. Obviously, um, marine electronics are like computers and they're constantly changing every year. You could upgrade if you wanted to. I guess if I could pull money out of my pocket and I was to redo it, um, I would probably have, I would stick with Simrad Autopilots. Simrad is known in the marine industry as um, having some of the best performing autopilots. So I would uh, sort of steer towards their commercial products and I would get two autopilots. I would keep the redundancy that we have today, just upgrade the model of Simrad that we have. When it comes to uh, radar and navigation, um, I think I would switch to Fruno. Fruno known for uh, really you know, being one of the biggest players in radar um, for marine use. And then also um, on the PC navigation side of things, uh, Fruno owns Time Zero, so their radar integrates well and radar can be displayed on PC navigation. So what I, what I would do is install two uh, Fruno multifunction displays and probably two uh, the PCs to have redundancy. So the PCs I would use for navigation and run Time Zero and then also have uh, the multifunction display as well and have two radars uh, likely one open array and, and one closed array uh, perhaps mounted on our mast so I think that's what I would do if um, if I could just pull money out of my pocket the second question that Jim has I'm gonna uh, answer with our fifth and final question which comes from Dominic uh, who lives in Austin Texas and Dominic asks, uh, does Sean have a captain's license and Jim uh, from the prior question asked uh, what was the process like to get your captain's license Yes, I do hold a 50-ton Masters U.S. Coast Guard captain's license with a towing endorsement. I've had that license now for eight years. They're valid for five, and then you need to renew them. Um, I got uh, my captain's license back when we had lived in Milwaukee, and the process was um, I went to instruction on the weekends. Our instructor had a course on Friday evenings and then all day Saturday and Sundays. It ran for four or five weeks, so there's between 60 and 80 hours worth of instruction work, and then the last weekend being testing. There was a lot of studying in the weeks between, but there's also some other things that you need to do um, during your off weeks. You need to get a medical examination, you need to get a drug test, you need to get uh, CPR certified, you need to fill out all of your Coast Guard paperwork. 
Um, you need to have sea service on a vessel that, that uh, totals, I think it's 360 um, or 65 days of operating time in the last five years, and an operating day is four hours um, underway. It doesn't need to be on your own boat, but somebody needs to be able to sign off on that. We've always had our own boat, so that wasn't an issue. Finally, you go for testing, and you submit your paperwork, and you get your captain's license. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, the process. So thanks everybody for all of your great questions. Again, if you want one of your questions answered, look us up on Instagram and drop us a direct message and we'll add it to the list and we'll get it answered in an upcoming video. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, click that notification bell so you know every time we're posting a new video and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next weekend. Cheers.